you know that we we tried this uh, a couple days ago. This is take two. Yep. Hi. How are you today? <laughs> I'm well, Corey. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. You you're uh you you got everything out of the trunk? Out you of need... the trunk. <laughs> <laughs> Excavated. All good. The uh the guy came up and uh if you want to know how to break into a car, he can show you. He so. can show he doesn't make you like go off to the side, turn your back, cover your eyes. Nope. Nope. He just brings his, uh, whatever it is, he attached to the window and it like creates separation, I guess. Okay. And then he has <laughs> <laughs> what looks like a stick that he's, uh, got some tape on and has just like a little MacGyver thing. Yeah. Slides it in there and then just, uh, I wanted to ask and I didn't, if he has different attachments for different kind of locks, you know, some cars, is a push down and some cars is the mm-hmm. by the handle it's a push and how that works but right he, it wasn't his first time <laughs> he did it pretty pretty quick oh, i'm sure uh so that that kind of likes makes me think about there's well first of all there's a mm-hmm. theory in business there's the empty chair right so in in our mm-hmm. conversation we should be considerate of the empty chair in in this that there's people out there who have no idea what you're talking about <laughs> You, uh, you, uh, somebody locked your uh, keys in the trunk of your car. Yep. Did the old, and I can't say anything because I did that once years ago. And, uh, I used to be the guy. I forget what we talked about when we did this the first time, but I'm going to repeat myself. There used to be the guy who opens the trunk, you know, puts the things, puts the keys down inside the trunk as you're rummaging and as you're doing the things. Oh God. And then the one time closed the trunk and, uh, I was in the middle of nowhere, up, up, up at the lake, mm-hmm. and uh, keys were on, house keys, or cottage keys were also on that, so I had to sit in the, on the ground <laughs> for about an hour. Uh, so it happened again this time, and it wasn't me, but... Um, no judgment. What am I going to say? <laughs> no judgment. I mean, it, yeah. it happens to the best of people, not to me. Just you telling me that story, though, even of putting keys in the trunk... It just yeah, it gives me the heebie-jeebies. I not good. So CAA it is your thing. It works. It works. Okay. Absolutely works. And sometimes you need it. Not very often, but sometimes. Have you have you used it before? Once that in that instance when I locked okay. myself out. Yeah. Okay. So now okay. twice. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm gonna sign up then because that's enough. I've heard enough. Right. It's pretty <laughs> reasonable. It's like yeah. something like. 30 bucks a year or something. I'm glad we were able to get back together. Yeah. And of course, I'm glad that uh, no one was stranded uh, in some remote location in in clement weather for a long period of time. Right. It did lead us to a reflective moment. We realized we have a key problem because, Hmm. so long story longer, I had to go over there because it's my name on the, on the card. Hmm. And it wasn't that far away. So I was, oh, I'll just, I'll bike over. <laughs> but our bikes are locked here at the house Uh-oh. on the same lock. Uh-oh. And I went out and realized it's her lock. Mm. Give her a call. Like, where's uh, where your, where's your key for the lock? Yeah. It's like, oh, I, I have that with me. Like, hmm? You're at that stage in the relationship. Mm-hmm. Yep. I guess I'll, uh, I guess I'll call an Uber then. Oh, dear. <laughs> You know, you get to a place uh, in in relationships where there's things that you you end up entangling, uh, and things that you you keep separate. Keys are a thing. I think if you share access to anything physical, you get everybody's got to have a key. I think that's reasonable. Mm-hmm. Um, there's other areas that maybe some people don't want their their meat and their potatoes to touch. I can appreciate that. Uh, for me, there's there's a tremendous amount of entanglement and and family sharing and duplicate keys and it's just it's i don't i don't know if we could ever come apart so when you move it's a whole thing i'm gonna have to get a new identity honestly Mm -hmm. i think that's the way it would work is that if we moved or if something happened or we split up i'm gonna have to go to another country and become pepe coates there's just there's no way about it well your keys are littered all over the world right (laughs) fact yeah i got you know what i was a little sad 
uh, I wasn't oh. able to elaborate more on how excited I was that that we have a robot vacuuming the house. We did have to interrupt that conversation. It, just, so it feels let's, like let's it's been it. hanging there. Yeah, look, so I went on the internet because I, vacuuming is annoying. Some people like it. I get that, but I'm not one of those. And uh, vacuuming in the household chore schedule doesn't fall under my category. It falls under someone else's category. However, um, I still think that in 2023, when there's an option to have something done by a robot, you should have a robot do it, right? Uh, if chat GPT could pay say. my bills, that would be great. Uh, maybe soon. I think it could actually. As it stands, it cannot, but there is an option for something else to vacuum for me. We're, we're in that kind of, we're in a condo, so we have no stairs. There's no complexity to it. It's all hardwood floors with a couple of rugs here and there. So I went on Amazon and I ordered the, one of the I Roombas with the self-sucking base, you know, that uh, self-cleaning. Sexy. It's pretty sexy. And it makes all the sounds and the beep bops and stuff. And we've already kind of anthropomorphized it, anthropomorphized it, anthropomorphized it. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Where we think it's mm -hmm. a, has a, it's like a creature that has a, a soul. Because <laughs> it's hilarious. I've seen the videos and yeah. it looks cool. Does it actually do that in real life? Yeah, it does a really good job. Um, cool. I mean, it's not perfect. That's for sure. It seems like the more it does it, the better it gets at it. Um, so it looks like it's there's training. a little bit of training and learning in there. There's times where I've had some pretty lengthy conversations with it when I've taken it to show it a piece of dirt that it missed or an area that I was surprised it completely seems to have ignored. Mm -hmm. um, there are other times when it, I thought scolded it wasn't it. done and I followed it back to its base to give it a proper scolding. So it's become a source of friendship and companionship for me as much as it has been a, a utility. I, I recommend them though, because it does, it's the 80, 20 rule, right? It does that. It does it like 80% of what it, we need it to do. The 20% of vacuuming, that's going to be a little bit of hand stuff. You got to kind of go do sometimes anyway, can be done less frequently. This is one of those kind of push a button. I go do groceries. I come back and my apartment's vacuumed. It handles the, Carpet to non-carpet transition smoothly? Better than I do. Mm. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Better than I do. And it scares the hell out of the kids. That's kind of right. fun too. So when the kids come over and they're uh, they're starting to act up a little bit, Uncle Corey fires up the, uh, the robot and you better watch how quickly those kids freeze. Because <laughs> they don't have anything to do with it. So there's an, there's an app, right? Yep. That you just, you know... Does it, it, can you do like, uh, like, you know, the, the light bulbs and you can set them to come on at some time and turn off at other times. Can you, yeah. can you get a, a schedule going? I can get a schedule going. I can just send it to certain rooms. So one of the popular areas that I do, especially as we're into spring and, uh, you know, salt and sand comes in. I, uh, I do like the, uh, Hey, go do the front entryway, oh. please. Right. Cause who, do, who loves that? Who wants to get the vacuum out to do an entryway? Nobody. And the kitchen, there's always stuff that just kind of ends up around the kitchen and stuff. Uh, so mm -hmm. it's been, it's been really nice uh, to just say, Hey, go, go take care of that. And uh, I'm going to go do what I got to do. Is it strictly an indoor pet or is it an outdoor pet too? An indoor pet. Have you seen though, this, this actually leads me to what I was thinking. I'm, I'm mm -hmm. not a, a yard owner. But uh, the robot vacuums are huge or the robot lawnmowers. In, in Europe, they're huge. They're, they're a thing. Like people in Europe wonder what? why North Americans actually mow their own lawns like, like dopes, <laughs> frankly. Like John Deere's. Yeah. <laughs> if I had a lawn, there, there ain't no way I would, I would be out there mowing it myself. No, 0% chance. Yep. I'd, not fun. Especially if a robot can do it. I mean, why not? Yeah. And they're electric. It's an electric robot. It's not like it's out so, there, you know, fuming. Is it? What is it? I've never seen this. Like a, a lawn, a riding mower that's a robot, like a car that's, or is it like a push mower that kind of... It's like a cube goes around your yard. And just chisels the, the grass. Yeah. It's like a, it's like a Roomba, 
like a robot vacuum, but lawnmower. It's the same principle, right? It's a thing with wheels, a base station, a battery, but instead of like a, you know, a brush and, and a sucky wow. part, this is my engineering degree coming out. It has a uh, spinny blades. <laughs> Why don't we have that here? That sounds great. I, I think it's, I think it's big lawnmower. I think that's the, that's oh. what's holding it back is there are big, things. Big lawn. I can tell you in, in our research of various things that we would like to have in our home. Like a butter knife that is an actual butter knife that has an angle and it sits on a plate and it's proper. Mm -hmm. Those things are all over Europe and Japan and stuff because they exist. But here, Big Butter doesn't want you to have that knife. No way, because you're not going to waste as much butter. They're going to sell more butter. It's a big conspiracy. There is stuff that, especially because of paid search and SEO, We'll never see that stuff. We'll search for it. We can't find it. We can't find it. Are you telling me that, that the only vacuum companies are Dyson and Bissell? Are you telling me that? No. Mm -hmm. There's Miel. <laughs> There's all kinds of great vacuum companies out there. Big Butter. I haven't given much thought to Big Butter, but uh, Big Big Brother Butter, I guess. You're right. Try and I buy don't want you to have that good. knife. Yeah. In Europe, they've got everything. They've got nice stuff that lasts, that's well-made and is practical. Here, we've got a bunch of crap that breaks down in two years and it's top ranked in Google search. I'm not kidding. This, I, this, we've been in the pandemic for many years. I've, I've been searching for good things. Let's go to and, Europe. Sounds, sounds great. We, that uh, is true. I mean, watching the YouTube videos and things, people who travel and tech channels that are in different places of the world. It's like, what, what is that? And it's like been there forever. And... Japan especially, it's wild. It's amazing. Japan's crazy. Japan has all the little things and have had them forever. We, um, I follow a couple different blogs like Red Dot Design Awards and Yanko Design and stuff. So these are sites that specialize in featuring products that are well-designed, well-made, super functional, all this neat stuff. And, you know, they give out awards for these designs. Mm -hmm. You've never seen any of these things. Like anywhere, you have to go super, super look for it. So we, we, we have a, our TV stand is a, it's like a tripod, you know, like an easel that you'd put a painting on. Mm -hmm. Cause we were looking for, we want to, we wanted a nice way to, to have our TV up without bolting it to the wall or putting it on some ugly unit. Right. So. We Those couldn't find anything because yeah, there's, there's the only options you go to and everything is like, you go to Leon's. Oh, you don't want to go to Leon's? Go to the brick. No. You want to go to the brick? You got to go. You Big Mouth doesn't places. want that. Right. And then you, it's like, oh, let's save some money. We'll go to StruckTube or go to Ikea. And it's, it's all the same crap. It's all the same. There's, there's no options. So we go to Red Dot and it's like, oh, look at that beautiful three-legged wooden TV stand. It's beautiful and it twists the TV so you can put it at different angles and stuff. And it's like, this is hmm. really gorgeous. Um, and guess where we found it? The brick. <laughs> <laughs> they, they had like one left in the back corner because they couldn't sell any of them, you know? Huh. That's funny. We are thinking about the next, that's a TV. We were having that very discussion. Do we mount it? We want to mount it, but we don't want one of those big bulky mounts and then you can't pivot it and you can't move it around and once it's there it's there and red dot i'm going to send All you right. a picture of please my, do my tv stand because it's great it's really really nice and then with the um with the the surround sound system the same thing again it's like oh god you get all these little crappy boxes with wires everywhere and stuff no i want something really slick and really nice so, I, you know, I, I went with a nice Sonos bar and subwoofer, but mm -hmm. white to match the decor. But then I had to find like a special way to hang the bar off the bottom of the TV. So it wasn't like it was, it was a whole thing. But again, you know, if you just use like a, a VPN and search and pretend you're in like Sweden, dude, you should see the stuff they got over there. Beautiful, easy, functional, inexpensive. You know, and then you come over here and it's like whatever they can afford to market to you <laughs> is the crap that you think that there is. And that's it. The closest we have to that is we got the, the frame TV. Are you familiar with the frame? 
I am familiar with the frame. We like it a lot. And it's super simple, really nice idea. Flat against the wall. So it, doesn't look, it looks like uh, art, right? Yep. If it's not on and you could put your pictures there and whatever. Um, no wires. It has its own box that all the things plug into that you put in the corner in the closet, whatever. Nice. And motion sensor when you walk by, it turns on, turns the art on. If you want it to turn Ooh. on the TV, you can do that. Flush against the wall. No wires. It's it's real nice. There's um, there's nice stuff to be had. You just gotta go look for it. We went to uh, we went to the home show a few weeks ago. What's the home show? Have you ever been to a home show? It's like uh, of course not. Like the the uh, the car the auto show, but for homes. Get out. Yeah, like you buy couches and interior design and you know whatever. Is it for like just obviously? Is it like the public or is it for design? Like who's this for? Good question. I I mean I learned a lot. I learned it's for people who have a lot of money. Everything's very expensive. Mm. It's you know people come paint your cupboards or you want to buy a new TV or you want barbecues like anything you could buy in the home section of Home Depot or something. But yeah. it's like triple the price. Mm. We got free tickets from our realtor. We're homeowners now, so we were like, oh, they oh. want to go to the home show. Oh, and we got free tickets, and it was like a Saturday. So okay, let's go check it out. Wow. I'm trying to walking around trying to figure out who they they're marketing to or who their audience is, but it's not us. Holy moly! It's five thousand dollar Game of Thrones front doors and all that kind of stuff. Like, <laughs> like, <laughs> holy Moses! Um, but one thing they had, which was really cool, is they have, and maybe this exists in Japan. I'm sure it does. But they have basically a version of a mobile home that's not. A mobile home so it's a thing that you can plop in your backyard that is like 500 square feet or something and it's a completely sustainable solar powered extension of your house yes they sell them for one hundred and twenty five thousand dollars, and the pitch is you can be an airbnb in your backyard Oh or maybe you can plot it down somewhere or <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if you have someone in your house that's living there like a adult child, um, their new room can be out there. It was actually really, really cool. I've seen these. So they're really popular in Europe. <laughs> Especially during the, the pandemic. A lot of people put home offices in their yards. Yes. Um, I've fantasized about this. We've, we've talked about what our ideal home situation would be. And, and that kind of plays into it a little bit. Um, you know how like on Seinfeld, it was Kramer who was like, just levels, just imagine levels. <laughs> we're, we're pods. Imagine pods. Yep. All right. So there's a central pod where it's like the community pod, the, the kitchen area and the living room and stuff. And the, all the kind of main activities happen in this pod. And then it, there, it branches out. So there's these walkways to individual pods. There can be an office pod, right? There'll be a studio pod, a guest pod, you know, so uh, like a a she shed style craft Mm -hmm. pod. Mm -hmm. So just kind of like this, all of these different isolated areas that are interconnected by walkways. Um, So everyone can go and have their own space in their own pod, you know, and you maybe the, the system will notify you or let you know like which pod Who's in which pod, maybe, so you don't have to like wa- you know wander around pod to pod, <laughs> or like a name tag, yeah, or some elaborate walkie-talkie system. It'd be nice to know. It's like, oh, you know, he's in the he's in the studio pod right now. Uh, I, like I, it. I just I, I think I think we're on to something with it. It's kind of like a pod. Tiny home was the word I was looking for. They're tiny homes, so tiny homes are a thing. They exist. But this is, I guess, a sustainable version of it. So, and they, we, we went through the demo. They had it in there and they took us on the tour. And I guess there's three different setups that they have. This was like the Canadian version. So it's like just prototype pre-launch kind of thing. Um, but they set it up as the Airbnb version. So if you were listing it as Airbnb um, somewhere on the lake, then this, but you could change it into office. You could change it into you live here. There's like different kitchen options, different types of appliances. It's all... It hooks up to a septic or hooks up to your piping or wherever you would put it. It's a really cool idea. There's the only thing I'm 
wondering is the the permits right depending on where you live what type of property you have i i would imagine or hope that these guys as part of their services maybe can investigate what your options are where you, you would live. think yeah because uh i know there's a lot of areas it's like you can't like a shed has to be a certain size and i wonder what it's classified as yeah is it a extension is it a room is it a shed is it a garage like yeah i don't right. know Right. And yeah. then it's like, that's what I was thinking. Like, you know, when people think about putting a, maybe they don't anymore, but putting a pool in your backyard, but then the realtor is like, because oh, people don't want that. So it actually decreases your value. Right. If you're selling your place and you have this tiny home in the backyard, how does that work? Or, or can you have it taken out like a trailer? Right. So if you have, um, so my, across the street, we we have family living there. They got a massive yard. They have a pool, by the way. Hmm. But in the corner of this massive yard, there once was a mobile home. So they had like a, a cement pad put down, uh, AC or is that what it is? Electricity. <laughs> DC. DC. I feel like it's a different kind of hookup for motorhomes. But anyway, they had the the thing sticking out of the ground. You can plug your home into. I guess. Again, it's my engineering side just shining. <laughs> Plug in your home. And, uh, you know, when they moved and they sold the house, they drove away with their other home. So the pad was left there. Um, mm -hmm. Now, they went ahead and they ripped it up and turned it into more lawn. But I can see that these uh, home pod people would put down some sort of a foundation, right? There'd be some sort of a pad, like the concrete or something they put down where you could just as easily have a crane take it out it's mobile in the sense that you could hire a crane firm or a wide truck company to do it but not mobile in the sense that you could do it yourself that's how it was explained to me it's like you're not going to hook this up to your truck and drive it down the highway but you could hire one of those whatever wide load things to come and bring it out for you have we just rebranded and modernized the trailer park is that really like are we saying that we're now so rich that we can have like uh, a low income house in addition to our home. Like, I think that's what's happening. I mean, it was, it's pitched, uh, I guess it's whatever you want it to be, but it's a sustainable option. So I guess the main market is, or I shouldn't say main, but you know, if you can't afford to buy a house in in certain city here, you can buy a plot of land yep. anywhere and put this thing on it interesting okay i like this idea a, a ton yeah i love i've been following tiny homes forever because i think that they're just super cool because uh, i i don't i don't need a lot of space to run around you know and i think that there's only when someone else is home you realize the size of your place when, it's, when you're the only one home you know, your place is huge. <laughs> it's only being one room at a time. Right. I think a tiny home makes a ton of sense. And I've often fantasized about having uh, tiny homes and places. Right? So little areas like a little tiny home, up, a little tiny chalet, <laughs> you know, that I just go up to. Well, when the option becomes like in cities, for example, that or living in a really super small box condo, I mean, tiny home becomes pretty attractive. Yep. Um, really having a separate office for me would be spectacular. Another, we, I seen this in a lot of, uh, the recording studios that the people that I follow, they, they have their home and their family and their lives. And in the back corner of their yard, they've built their studio so that they go to work every day, you know, they mm. go in there and they do their, their music for TV and film. And then they go back home after work. Like so it, it gives them that not only physical separation for, for sound purposes, but just the psychology of having to, I got to put on literally some pants to go across the yard. Otherwise I'm just going through my yard in my house coat. <laughs> and for me, I've, I've often struggled with that as somebody who's worked from home forever is, uh, you know, getting into the mindset yeah. of going to work. And if I had something like that in the backyard that was set up as an office space, I don't know, maybe, maybe I would feel more like I'm going to work. So it sounds like you're asking the family across the street for permission to put the tiny home in their backyard. 
I think in an indirect way, that's where this is going. Mm -hmm. And then you have to get a set of keys for it. We could do a timeshare. <laughs> Everybody gets to book in time. You, you pick mods, you know, mod three and four. I'm going to be in there. I don't think that's, that's the adult version of you know, like your dad sending you to your room, right? But it's a good, in a good way. Like in when your kid gets sent to your room, it's, it's, it's punitive. But as an adult, it's like everyone, when's my turn to go to my room? Yeah. And what I've seen though is when you get these established and you're so excited because I'm going to get so much done in this space. You know, mm -hmm. I've seen a lot of folks put their she shed together because they're going to be crafting like mad. And then uh, she gets in the she shed and she just ends up watching YouTube and shit because <laughs> it's like, man, eh. all right. Because half the fun <laughs> was the notion of having a space to do that. But what you really wanted was a space to just go be alone and mm -hmm. do whatever you want to do. Because I know a lot of dudes with offices at home, you know, and these offices at home are just a place where they go watch the game. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know? They got a they got a bottle of of whiskey in the drawer. They got a little fridge because you gotta have a fridge slash. Gotta have a fridge. Yeah, because everyone needs ice at work, <clears throat> and they just they go watch the football game. <laughs> but they justify it by going, "I need an office. I need it's a man to... cave." But I work from home, so I need an office. I need my space to think. Yeah. Do you do you do a lot these days? Like, I'm thinking about work. Do you do you work a lot? What's a lot? I don't know. Like, what is it? What, what do we even mean by, by work anymore? You know, in a way, right? There's the things that we do and, but less and less there's the times that we need to be somewhere. Mm -hmm. So it's more like the things that we do, I guess, the tasks. You know, I don't always toot my own horn. horn. <laughs> Pretty proud of myself. I like my life. Do I work a lot? I mean, I guess, but I like what I do. And I wake up in the morning and I do my exercise and I have my coffee and, you know, maybe 10 o'clock, turn the computer on kind of thing. Um, do some work, have lunch, a little bit of YouTube, come back. You know, we're here at six o'clock on a Tuesday. We're doing, I mean, I like, I like, uh, right. I have things that I need to do. Yeah. And sometimes you got to show up at a certain time, but pretty much um, I, I, I'm, I'm real comfortable with, and there's, like I've busy like Tuesday, Thursday are my like kind of go days, but the other three days are pretty, pretty flexy as you would say. So right. I, I like it. I'm bursty. I'm, I burst, you know, like that's, I remember back when I was working for people, they would need you to be here mm -hmm. between this time and this time. And during that time, you would either have a good burst of productivity and do quite a bit or you would be sitting in a lull captive to the time that you've agreed to be somewhere waiting for a burst to happen or kind of faking your way through it or just kind of killing right. time or wasting other people's time so i've i've found as i transitioned into self-employment since well, the last 10 years basically the the guilt that i would still feel that I'm not sitting somewhere at certain times a day being consistently productive mm. I lingered for years and years and years. It's like, oh, it's Monday. It's like 9 a.m. I should be doing something. Um, or it's like, oh, it's Friday afternoon. I better not, you know, go have a steak. <laughs> but you know what? Um, what's the difference? As long as you, you're not doing nothing, and you're still bringing yourself to something fully when you're needed and you're proactively doing something that's going to move things forward. I'm just kind of celebrating the burstiness of the work. I know? like that burstiness. I like that. I mean, I have a few different projects that I do, but I think I've never had like a job. <laughs> like I've worked for lots of people, but like I've been a teacher, like, Right. You know, you teach a class for two hours and you go home. Like it's not, I've never had a nine to five to a desk job. I've yep. never, never had that. So that's interesting to hear that you have that feeling because I've never had that feeling. I have task lists now that I have, you know, to-do lists. So today I want to get this done ideally in, in these times, you know, but no, it's, it's quite nice. I, I like it. The one thing I struggle with is I need, 
especially from home, I need, I need to be better at turning it off like at this time or whatever. Right. Cause I do have that feeling of on those days when you didn't get your to-do list done, like, well, I could do it now. It's eight o'clock. I, I could do it. It's possible. And just resisting that and turning that off and not letting that, you know, intrude. That's my area for improvement. Isn't it okay though, in the event that you're in a bursty place and it's like, look, momentum itself is pushing me through and I'm, I'm enjoying the task and I'm getting it done. And I feel like I might actually complete tonight. That's what yeah. she said. So if I get to that place, you know, why not push to eight, nine o'clock and go ahead and do it? I think that there's that diminishing returns, right? I'm now just, I'm, dra- I'm trying to drag myself through the tasks and it's being unproductive and it doesn't matter whether it gets done or not tonight. It's just, I've imagined, I put it in my head right. often, this imaginary time constraint on it. And now, <clears throat> you know, I better finish. So I'm better, I better grind. It's it's gotten to a point where I'm like this is all sort of silly, uh, because what's the, I mean? Look, I went and had a steak last week because uh, I forgot how much I. Now that we're kind of post pandemic, I've really forgotten how much I enjoy sometimes just being inspired to go out and have brunch by myself or go for a walk to the river for three hours or something. It's not to say that I don't do anything, but sometimes it's like, you know, when you're just sitting there and you're staring at your computer yep. and you know what you got to do and there's a bunch of it that's got to be done and it'd be nice if it got done today, but it's okay if it doesn't get done today. What I really want is I want to try that new butcher that also sells steak like that. You can, that's, you know, they cook mm. the meat. So that's what we did. We're like, you know, what? Ah, ah, yeah. let's, let's go. Let's go get a steak. And it was delicious. And they had these veal burgers. And it was the, I, I enjoyed a, a beer. I had a, like an actual beer, you know, hey. and it was the afternoon. And it's like, you're going back. And she's like, are you going back to work today? And I said, nah, yeah. nah, let's, let's get to, let's get to Nothing's search. that bad. Nothing happens. Yep. It's fine. Yep. We went to <laughs> patio on Sunday after the car expedition. Cause we were like, well, we're here. And this, this is, Canadians are so funny, I think, right? Because it's March, it's winter. It's and the sun comes out <laughs> once for the first time in seven months. Yeah. And it's six degrees, but in the sun, it feels like nine degrees. And everyone's out just playing tennis and the dogs are running around and birds and everyone's on a patio in their jackets. And and it feels like it's summer, but it's like, it's it's still winter. But we were out there too. Like we're, this is what, what Canadians do in March when the first kind of sort of maybe nice day so it had some some tacos and some cervecitas mm. on the on a patio mm. on sunday and it was really nice it's amazing how quickly a canadian will put on shorts saw some shorts yeah <laughs> <laughs> like you never see this anywhere else in the world we were we were saying like and we're guilty of it too of course but like it's so funny here like after like this time of year when you know spring is coming yep. it's not here but you haven't seen sun in six months and any time that it's kind of like kind of sort of there out come the shorts let's go play tennis we do everything in one in one day yeah yeah well you got to take what you can get here That's summer true. is short summer is short uh, I, I don't know is that it that might be it i think so i think we promised in our first attempt to try and keep this short the big short the- I feel good. I'm a, I'm a hit stop. I feel good too. All right. <laughs> That's it.